Issues of theft in the Philippines. Um, I would say most of it's petty stuff. But also, a lot of it wouldn't make any sense to the average person. Um, for example, a friend of mine um, is, is Filipino, owns several pharmacies. He had several helpers at the house actually to be live in. And when they were at work during the day, they were stealing all the rice, stealing whatever they could find on the food front because obviously electronics or something of value um, would be noticed quite quickly but if you're stealing a couple of kilos of rice a day um, it's not really noticed but obviously if your food bill starts shooting up you, you know it's over a period of time so in result those people weren't living um, they, were, they were stealing rice for their family and stuff because um, they'd have members of the family turn up at the house when, you know, when they knew the owner was at work and basically taking the food back up to the village or wherever they came from. Um, now some people go, oh well, yeah, but we should be helping these people. But these are thieves. There, there's, there is no reason for them to be stealing A, the quantities of food they were stealing, but B, to be stealing at all. You've already given them a job. You've given them a place of living, food, a salary, etc. And then on top of that, they're stealing from you for their extended family. It's theft. It doesn't matter how you look at it, it's theft. Um, a friend of mine has a girl that comes to his house because uh, she comes from a poor family. She's not old enough to actually work, but he lets her do housekeeping. Um, so you know she just pots around mops the floors that sort of stuff and he gives her some money every day she steals any small coins and notes that are in the house he knows she does it but he's got the same thing oh she's poor blah, blah, blah. it's theft anything that allows theft encourages theft etc is wrong it doesn't matter rich poor etc theft is theft it is morally wrong regardless of what scale you're looking at from a business point of view this is also a major problem. Um, you'll find restaurants do it. You'll find big businesses do it. They have regular drug testing. They have uh, bag searches, quick pat down. Every time people go into a building sometimes for the search, but the drug tests are like every couple of weeks or something because they know it's a big problem. Uh, there's no easy solution for it because as soon as you start going, right, I don't trust you or whatever, or there's a doubt there and go I do trust you that's when you start having problems that's why you'll find that there is a restaurant where the guy had employed this chef now the chef basically was bringing his own food so say you were doing say 60 servings a day and he would do 20 servings himself with his own food then pocket that money at the sale rate that's pretty good money for somebody that's got no overheads and that's obviously quite a big theft this is why you gotta be hands-on with the business you gotta be in there going okay well what's going on what's happening and I said you know myself when the call center um, we lost one of our managers because she was having a child etc I just put everything on pause it was like okay no work until she comes back because I'm not there, my wife's not there and if she's not there then that's it, it's, it's on hold I do not want any headaches, I don't want any problems and I know other call centers, they have people offering me everything that's in the call center I know what dialing list people have got, They're, I can get them, I can get all their previ previous sales and everything else and these are people that are in positions of trust in other call centers. This is why you have to be very careful. I run my own servers. You know, my servers are basically sat my, under my desk in Spain. I took the hard drives out. I'm not there. Took the systems with me. Um, because there's a lot of information on there which is very, very uh, sensitive or very, very valuable to other people. So I keep it all. This is the sort of extremes you have to go to sometimes to make sure that you have no headaches. You know, because if somebody got hold of somebody's sales data, for example, off one of my drives and then went through an entire sales list, 
then I may get a client call me up and say, you know, Matt, what's going on? You know, I paid you for these sales and I've just had my main competitor take them all from me because he's gone round and undercut me because he's got the full list, etc. This is why it's important you are very sensitive with your business. Your business is yours. You know, I know in the Philippines a lot of people say, yeah, but it's your wife operating Nixon. Yes, but you can sit in the ivory tower and basically keep control of things. You know, although your wife is running it, etc., you need to make sure you've got all the security in place to make sure you're not getting ripped off somewhere. And like I said, I mean, even the small stuff where people are stealing food, stealing money off the table, etc., it goes on everywhere. So just be very aware. The trust is earned, it's not given. You know, they have to earn it first. You don't automatically trust people. A lot of Filipinos expect to be searched and whatever. You, if you don't, it's seen as a weakness because you've been stupid enough to let them just do what they want. And as such, leave yourself open to abuse. Because Filipinos do it to each other. You know, the it's, Filipino businesses will search the employees. Filipino businesses will do drug tests. Filipino businesses are very strict on rules, etc. So don't just assume that, oh, it's a bad foreigner, etc. He's being so strict with the employees. No, because everybody does it, because you have to. If you don't, you'll go bankrupt.